This is Buddhist Books Podcast, episode 223, Tipitaka, part 145, in which I will begin reading Mahavaga 2. So we just finished Mahavaga 1. There were 15 parts. If you would like to start at the beginning of Mahavaga 1, you can click there. That's the Mahavaga playlist. So you can, you know, you can start anywhere you'd like. Um, we're on the fourth book of the Tibitaka, which is the discipline basket of the three baskets of pre-sectarian early Buddhism. If you'd like to start with the first book, then you can click here. That's the whole Tipitaka that we've read so far. Okay, I will go ahead and get started. Hope everyone's doing well. <clears throat> the Great Division, Mahavaga 2. At one time, the Awakened One, the Lord, was staying near Rajagaha, on Mount Vulture Peak. Now at that time, wanderers belonging to other sects, having collected together on the 14th, 15th, and 18th days of the half month, spoke Dhamma. People came up to them to hear Dhamma. They gained affection for the wanderers belonging to other sects. They gained faith, parentheses, in them, end parentheses. The wanderers belonging to other sects gained adherence. Then reasoning arose thus in the mind of King Senia Bimbisara of Magadha, as he was meditating in seclusion. Quote, at present, wanderers belonging to other sects, having collected together on the 14th, 15th, and 18th days of, oh, excuse me, 8th, 14th, 15th, and 8th days. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Odd, but I'll keep reading. Days of the half month spoke, speak Dhamma. These people go up to them to hear Dhamma. They gain affection for the wanderers belonging to other sects. They gain faith, parentheses, in them, and parentheses. The wanderers belonging to other sects gain adherence. Suppose the masters should also collect together on the 14th, 15th, and 8th days of the half month. End quote. Then King Senia Bimbisara of Magadha approached the Lord. Having approached, having greeted the Lord, he sat down at a respectful distance. As he was sitting down at a respectful distance, King Senia Bimbisara of Magadha spoke thus to the Lord, quote, Now, Lord, as I was meditating in seclusion, a reasoning arose in my mind thus, quote within quotes, at present wanderers belonging to other sects, three dots, should collect together on the 14th, 15th, and 8th days of the half month, end quote within quotes, end quote. Then the Lord gladdened, rejoiced, roused. Delighted King Senia Bimbisara of Magadha with talk on Dhamma. Then King Senia Bimbisara of Magadha gladdened, three dots, delighted by the Lord with talk on Dhamma, rising from his seat, having greeted the Lord, departed, keeping his right side towards him. Then the Lord. On this occasion, in this connection, having given reasoned talk, addressed the monks, saying, quote, I allow you, monks, 
to assemble together on the fourteenth, fifteenth, and eighth days of the half month. End quote. Now at that time, monks thinking, quote, it is allowed by the Lord to assemble together on the fourteenth, fifteenth, and eighth days of the half month, end quote, having assembled together, sat down. Silence. Those people came up to hear Dhamma. They looked down upon, criticized, spread it about, saying, quote, How can these recluses, sons of the Sakyans, having assembled together on the fourteenth, fifteenth, and eighth days of the half month, sit in silence like dumb pigs? And, oh no, uh, it continues. Ought not Dhamma to be spoken when they are assembled together? End quote. Monks heard these people who three dots spread it about. Then these monks told this matter to the Lord. Then the Lord, on this occasion, in this connection, having given reasons talk, addressed the monks, saying, quote, I allow you, monks, having assembled together on the fourteenth, fifteenth, and eighth days of the half-month, to speak Dhamma, end quote. Then the Lord was meditating in seclusion. What? Then as the Lord was meditating in seclusion, a reasoning arose in his mind, quote, what now if I were to allow those rules of training laid down by me for monks, parentheses, to form, end parentheses, a recital of Patimoka for them? It would be a, parentheses, formal, end parentheses, act of observance for them. End quote. Then the Lord, having emerged from his seclusion in the evening, on this occasion, in this connection, having given reason to talk, addressed the monks, saying, quote, Now, monks, as I was meditating in seclusion, a reasoning arose in my mind thus, quote within quotes, What now, if I should allow those rules of training laid down by me for monks, parentheses, to form, and parentheses, a recital of Patimoka for them? It would be a, parentheses, formal, end parentheses, act of observance for them. End quote within quotes. I allow you, monks, to recite a Patimoka. And thus, monks, should it be recited. The order should be informed by an experienced, competent monk, saying, quote within quotes, Honored sirs, let the order listen to me. Today, the 15th, parentheses, day, and parentheses, is an observance, parentheses, day, and parentheses. If it seems right to the order, the order may carry out observance. It may recite the Patimoka. What is the order's first duty? Let the venerable ones announce entire what? Announce entire purity. I will recite the Patimoka parentheses while and parentheses one and all of us present listen properly and pay attention to it. He for whom there may be an offense should reveal it. If there is no offense, you should become silent. By your becoming silent, I shall thus know that the venerable ones are quite pure. For as there is an answer for each question, so it is proclaimed up to the third time in an assembly like this. Whatever monk remembering while it is being proclaimed up to the third time <clears throat> that there is an existent offense and should not reveal it, there comes to be conscious lying for him. Now, conscious lying, venerable ones, is a thing called a stumbling block by the Lord. 
Therefore, the existent offense should be revealed by a monk who remembers that he has fallen, parentheses, into an offense, end parentheses, and who desires purity. For when it is revealed, there comes to be comfort for him. End quote. Patimoka means, this is the beginning. This is the head. This is the foremost of states that are good. Therefore, it is called Patimoka. The Venerable Ones mean this, quote within quotes, the Venerable, well, quotes within quotes within quotes, right? Are we still within the quotes? I'm confused. Oh, well. The, this Venerable One, the Venerable Ones, is a term of esteem. This is a special, this is a term of respect. This is a deferential and honorific designation. I will recite means I will explain, I will teach, I will lay down, I will establish, I will make clear, I will analyze, I will make plain. To it means, to parentheses what and parentheses is called the patimoka. One and all of us present means, as many as there are in this assembly, elders and new, newly ordained, and those of middle standing, these are called, quote, and quotes, one and all of us present, end quote, and quotes. Parentheses, we, and parentheses, listen properly, means having applied ourselves, having attended, we concentrate with all our mind. Parentheses, we, and parentheses, pay attention, means we listen. Minds one-pointed, minds not distracted, minds not perturbed. He for whom there may be an offense means a certain offense of the five classes of offense, or a certain offense of the seven classes of offense, for an elder, or for a newly ordained one, or for one of middle standing. He should reveal means he should tell, he should make clear, he should open up, he should make plain in the midst of an order, or in the midst of a group, or to one individual. If there is no offense means either one comes not to be committed, or if fallen into, it is removed. You should become silent means you should consent, you should not speak. I shall know that you are quite pure means I will know, I will understand. For as there is an answer for each question means, as one parentheses person and parentheses if questioned about one parentheses thing and parentheses would answer, so it should be known to that assembly, quote within quotes, he questions me, end quote within quotes. An assembly like this, parentheses means, and parentheses, it is called an assembly of monks. It is proclaimed up to the third time means it is proclaimed once and it is proclaimed a second time and it is proclaimed a third time. Remembering means knowing, perceiving. There is an existent offense means either one comes to be committed or if fallen into is not removed. Should not reveal means should not tell, should not make clear should not open up, should not make plain in the midst of an order or in the midst of a group or, one, or to one individual. There comes to be conscious lying for him means, what is conscious lying? It is an offense of wrongdoing. A thing called a stumbling block by the Lord means a stumbling block to what? It is a stumbling block to the attainment of the first parentheses stage in end parentheses meditation. It is a stumbling block to the attainment of the second parentheses stage in end parentheses 
Three dots, the third parenthesis, stage in meditation, and parenthesis, meditation. Three dots, the fourth parenthesis, stage in, and parenthesis, meditation. If you were wondering, the Polytext Society uh, was just making that a little bit shorter by removing the words um, in boop, 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 becomes a stumbling block to, of, uh, to the attainment of. That's what goes in the three block, duh. The three dots, the train says hi. Okay, to be honest, I just wanted an excuse to throw in the, the Polytech Society thing. I'm trying to work that in in every episode because someone requested it. Okay, anyway, <clears throat> get serious here. Um, it is a stumbling block to the attainment of the meditations, of the deliverances, of the contemplations, of the attainments, of the renunciations, of the escapes, of the aloofness, of states that are good, period, full stop. Sorry, the Americans say period when there's a full stop, so it's an old habit. <clears throat> Therefore means for that reason, by parentheses a monk and parentheses who remembers means by parentheses one and parentheses knowing, by parentheses one and parentheses perceiving, by parentheses a monk and parentheses who desires purity means by parentheses one and parentheses wishing to remove parentheses an offense and parentheses by parentheses one and parentheses wishing to be purified. Existent offense means either one comes to be committed or if fallen into it is not removed. Should be revealed means it should be revealed in the midst of an order or in the midst of a group or to one individual. For when it is revealed there comes to be comfort for him means in what is there comfort? There comes to be comfort in the attainment of the first parentheses stage in and parentheses meditation. There comes to be comfort in the attainment of yeah, there comes to be comfort in the attainment in the second parentheses stage in and parentheses meditation. Three dots, the third parentheses, stage in and parentheses, meditation. Three dots, the fourth parentheses, stage, <coughs> excuse me, in and parentheses, meditation. There comes to be comfort in the attainment of the meditations, of the deliverances, of the contemplations, of the attainments, of the renunciations, of the escapes, of the aloofness, of states that are good. Now at that time, monks thinking, quote, the recital of the Patimokkha is allowed by the Lord, and quote, recited the Patimokkha daily. They told this matter to the Lord. He said, quote, monks, the Patimokkha should not be recited daily. Whoever should, parentheses, so, and parentheses, recite it, there is an offense of wrongdoing. I allow you, monks, to recite the Patimokkha on an observance day. End quote. Now at that time, monks, thinking, quote, the recital of the Patimokkha on an observance day is allowed by the Lord, and quote, recited the Patimokkha three times during the half month on the 14th, the 15th and on the 8th days, days in parentheses, of the half month, they told this matter to the Lord. He said, quote, monks, the Padimokha should not be recited three times in the half month. Whoever should, parentheses, so, and parentheses, recite it, there is an offensive wrongdoing. I allow you, monks, to recite the Padimokha once in the half month, either on the 14th or the 15th, parentheses, day, end parentheses, end quote. 
Now at that time, the group of six monks recited the Patimokha according to assembly, each one before his own assembly. They told this matter to the Lord. He said, quote, monks, the Patimokha should not be recited according to assembly, each one before his own assembly. Whoever should, parentheses, so, end parentheses, recite it, there is an offense of wrongdoing. I allow you, monks, a parentheses formal and parentheses act of observance for all together. End quote. Then it occurred to the monks, quote, a parentheses formal and parentheses act of observance for all together is allowed by the Lord. Now, how far does quote within quotes being all together and quote within quotes, parentheses, go, end parentheses. As far as one residence or the whole earth, end quote. They told this matter to the Lord. He said, quote, I allow monks, uh, quote within quotes, being all together, end quote within quotes, parentheses, to mean, end parentheses, as far as one residence. End quote. Now at that time, the venerable Kapina the Great was staying near Rajagaha at Mada Kukhi. Kukhi. Sorry. I'm, it looks like it's going to say Mada Kuchi, but I don't think it does. Oh, no. No, it does. Mada Kukchi. Okay. Good enough. It just sounds kind of Italian, but it's that's what's written here, I think. In the Deer Park. Then, as the venerable Capina the Great was meditating in seclusion, a reasoning arose in his mind thus, quote, Should I go to an observance, or should I not go? Should I go to a parentheses formal end parentheses act of the order, or should I not go? I nevertheless am purified with the highest purification. End quote. Then the Lord, knowing by mind the reasoning in the mind of the venerable Kapina the Great, as a strong man might stretch out his bent arm or might bend back his outstretched arm, even so did he vanishing from Mount Vulture Peak, appear in Madakuchi in the Deer Park before the Venerable Kapina the Great. Teleportation? Astral projection? The Lord sat down on an appointed seat, <clears throat> and the Venerable Kapina the Great, having greeted the Lord, sat down at a respectful distance. As the venerable Kapina the Great was sitting down at a respectful distance, the Lord spoke thus to him, quote, Now, Kapina, as you were meditating in seclusion, did not a reasoning arise in your mind thus? Quote within quotes, should I go to an observance or should I not go? Should I go to a parentheses formal and parentheses act of the order, or should I not go? I nevertheless am purified with the highest purification, end quote, the quotes, end quote. Quote, yes, Lord, end quote. Quote, but if you Brahmins do not, re what? Do not reverence, revere, esteem, honor the observance, who is there who will reverence, revere, esteem, honor the observance? You go along, Brahman, to the observance. Do not not go, double negative. Go likewise to a parentheses formal end parentheses act of the order. Do not not go. End quote. Quote, yes, Lord. End quote. The venerable Kapina the Great answered the Lord in assent. Then the Lord having gladdened, rejoiced, roused, delighted the venerable Kapina the Great with talk on Dhamma, 
as a strong man might stretch out his bent arm or bend back his outstretched arm, even so did he vanishing from before the venerable Kapina the Great in Madakuchi, in his deer park, in the deer park, appear on Mount Vulture Peak. Then it occurred to the monks, quote, <clears throat> it is laid down by the Lord that, quote, within quotes, being all together, and quote, within quotes, parentheses means, and parentheses, as far as one residence. Now, how far does one residence, parentheses, go, end parentheses, end quote? They told this matter to the Lord. He said, quote, I allow monks to agree upon a boundary. And thus, monks, should it be agreed upon, first, marks should be announced. A mark consisting of a hillside, a mark consisting of a rock, a mark consisting of a grove, a mark consisting of a tree, a mark consisting of a road, a mark consisting of an ant hill, a mark consisting of a river, a mark consisting of parentheses, a place of end parentheses water. The order having announced the marks, should be informed by an experienced, competent monk, saying, quote within quotes, Honored sirs, let the order <clears throat> listen to me. Inasmuch as marks all round are announced, if it seems right to the order, the order may agree upon a boundary in accordance with these marks for the same communion for one observance. This is the motion. Honored sirs, let the order listen to me. And as much as marks all round are announced, the order is agreeing upon a boundary in accordance with these marks for the same communion, for one observance. If the agreement upon a boundary in accordance with these marks for the same communion, for one observance, is pleasing to the venerable ones, they should be silent. He to whom it is not pleasing should speak. The boundary in accordance with these marks is agreed upon by the order for the same communion for one observance. It is pleasing to the order, therefore it is silent. Thus do I understand this." End quote within quotes. End quote. Now at that time, the group of six monks, thinking, quote, an agreement upon a boundary is allowed by the Lord, end quote, end quotes, agreed upon very extensive boundaries of four yojanas and five yojanas and six yojanas. I assume that's a very long measurement of distance. Okay. Monks coming for observance arrived while the Patimokha was being recited and they arrived just after it had been recited and they stayed, parentheses, a night, and parentheses, on the way. They told this matter to the Lord. He said, quote, Monks, a very extensive boundary should not be agreed upon of four yojanas, or five yojanas, or six yojanas. Whoever should, parentheses, so, and parentheses, agree, there is an offense of wrong. I allow you monks to agree upon a boundary of three yojanas at most. End quote. Okay. Now at that time, the group of six monks agreed upon the other side of a river as boundary. Monks coming for observances were carried away and their bulls were carried away and their robes were carried away. They told this matter to the Lord. He said, quote, Monks, the other side of a river should not be agreed upon as a boundary. 
whoever should parentheses so and parentheses agree, there is an offense of wrongdoing. I allow you monks when there may be a reliable boat or a reliable bridge to agree upon the other side of such a river as a boundary. End quote. All right. Fun so far. Interesting. You know, uh, kind of putting oneself in the place of, uh, of these ancient monks and uh, seeing how the, the very bones of the, of the structure of, you know, of their practice was being put together. I know in the first three books, there were some rules that were established about going to the observance day, about not going to the observance day. There were things that would happen at the observance day. And I always kind of wondered, what are they going to explain the observance day? And yeah, they explained it. And it's very interesting, I think. Um, if you have the opportunity, if you're ever in India and you, you know, uh, perhaps are going to Bodh Gaya, it's about an hour and a half drive. If you get a, a cab, you can go to Rajgir as well. And uh, Nalanda University is a must see for any uh, Buddhist on a pilgrimage. Um, if you have a little bit of extra time after seeing Bodh Gaya, of course, there's the Maha Bodhi temple that you should see. I'll put that on the screen. Sorry that the camera's bouncing around. And uh, there's many other things to see. Here's an opportunity for me to show off some of my pictures from when I went to Bodh Gaya with Priel uh, a few, couple years ago. Um, but yes, again, there's a drive and here's a bit of the drive. This is what it will look like as you're driving, as you look out the window. And then you can go to Rajgir and you can see the ancient Buddhist university, Nalanda. These are all wonderful things. Um, but Rajgir is also um, sort of the heart of Jainism. And there, they, there's uh, temples there with museums. And uh, that was where I first began learning about the history of Jainism going back to, I mean, it, it's purported to go back prior to um, uh, Mahavir or Mahavira. Um, but he was teaching the king in Rajgir during um, probably just a few decades before Lord Buddha. I mean, it's, it's hard to say exactly, but it seems like Mahavir was there. And then within 40 to 80 years, um, the, the, the original Sangha of Buddhists were there. So when they talk about other wanderers of other sects, there were supposed to be some 62 different Shramana sects. That's basically ascetic sects, but there were some whose uh, description were any, anything but ascetic. You, you know, you start to wonder, well, what does Shramana mean if not ascetic? Because these monks here weren't ascetic. There were different groups of monks with different leaders in that same general time period. And Rajgir, or Rajgaha, as is mentioned here, uh, was, was kind of a hub. That was a very rel relatively urban center at the time, uh, there was a kingdom there where, for example, Bodh Gaya was wilderness. Now, of course, there's a city there uh, that's basically built around the, um, the pilgrimage site. Um, Gaya is, is also nearby. Bodh Gaya is right outside Gaya. There's an airport in Gaya. So when you go on your pilgrimage, that's probably where you'll land. So you land in Gaya, stay in Bodh Gaya, drive to Rajgir. And uh, yeah, check out Nalanda, and check out some of the Jain temples as well. And so yeah, when they talk about that there were uh, wanderers from other sects, that they had a tradition, it was a pre-established tradition that they would meet on the 15th, 16th, and 8th days of the half month. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure what that means. But anyway, we'll just take it as it is for now, and perhaps it'll become clear later on in our reading. And um, yeah, so that was a tradition that was already there and that the Buddhists adopted, the original Buddhists adopted. So probably the Jainists were meeting at that time for, uh, for that observance day. And they decided to recite their rules on the day 
on the observance day. So that's where that got started. That's how that got started, according to the scriptures. And it's very interesting. And uh, I hope you enjoy your trip to Bihar when it comes up. Okay, that's all for now. And I will go ahead and do the usual closing. I hope everybody's doing well, and I hope you have a wonderful week. To the north and to the south, to the east and to the west, to the spirits of light among us and to the spirits below, we send out our reverent love and compassion. May all beings be happy. May all beings be serene. <clears throat> May all beings be in peace. Oh. Until next time.